Y'all, I have sat here and watched this Evelyn Lozano, Paula Patton lookalike, and Sherelle, baby. I just got one thing to say. Are you in charge of the girl? glowing is the melanin just you know what we radiating what we giving what we giving what's the assignment I, am i giving am i doing did i finish the assignment is the question honey <laughs> look i'm on here today because i just finished watching this amazing well you know what before i begin excuse me where are my manners how you doing hello if you're new to this channel never you know First time, just clicked on and was like, what's going on? What, what, what is this girl doing? I just welcome you. My name is Carla. This is the Pretty Girl J channel. I give great reviews. The energy is always on 100. And if that's what you like to see and you like, you know, you like to laugh, you like the kiki, you don't take this shit seriously, hit that like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and hit the bell notification boo, okay? Trust me, it's entertainment. I go to sleep at night. I'll take your shit with me. If you always been rocking with me and you're my family member, hey, boo, y'all ready? What's going on? How you doing, boo? What's going on? I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Anywho, I hope all of you are doing well. I love each and every last one of you. Thank you so very much for asking about my family and myself and our health that we're doing. God and brought me through. I told y'all he was like, hold up, wait. But we're here. I feel, man, I'm back. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say, okay? But let's talk about this new Netflix series called Selling Tampa. I ain't going to lie. It's better than that whitefish. That, that Selling Sunset, baby. It's better than that, okay? And we, we have some amazing women of color my you know that are on here making money okay off of million mil, million million dollar deals do you hear me it's great now granted we still got our drama we still got office politics and things like that that will occur that have occurred in these eight episodes but i loved the show and i think that they should do a second season. That's what I think. Okay. So let me tell you about these ladies. Let me tell you. I'm going to drop their, I'm going to drop their photos, you know, and I'm going to tell you about them. I'm going to tell you what I like, what I don't like. Sherelle. Bitch, either you like playing with fire or roaches. Why are you pregnant with Chad Ochocinco? Head busting ass. Why are you pregnant by him? Girl, did you not learn your lesson with Evelyn? I know your ass watched Basketball Wives. You can't tell me you didn't. Honey, you cannot tell me you didn't. Are you kidding me, y'all? She said the most foolish, ridiculous ass shit I have ever heard. Okay? This girl said... We've been together for nine months. Bitch, you pregnant at the nine months from this man? But you've been on and off for two years. Y'all explain that to me. Y yeah, drop down in the comment section and tell me. Does that make any damn sense to y'all? Lady, you only had have had a strong a, a partially strong relationship for nine months. They don't even live in the same city. He lives in Miami. She lives in Tampa. Y'all see each other every three days. Anyway, you mean to tell me you ain't got pregnant off this man because he inhaled a phone call and text messages and took a couple pictures with y'all in nine months? Sherelle Rosado. Bitch, I'm going to need you to learn about Depo Provera, um, Nexaplon, Exaplon, uh, the birth control pill, 
I'm going to need for you to learn about a plan B pill. I'm going to need for you to learn how to protect yourself. You missed that class. You missed health day, didn't you? Your ass had to. Are you kidding me? And then on top of that, people, she has three kids already. A 15-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a damn five-year-old. And she says, and Chad has seven. I said, why the fuck are y'all having more kids? Y'all both. He should have had a vasectomy a long, long time ago. I'm going to say this. Kudos to Evelyn. Bitch, you missed. You missed. You, you, you missed a bullet. You know, you yeah, you got popped in your damn head. But you missed a, you dodged a damn bullet with this shit. Because seven kids. Seven kids. Half a team right there, don't it? Half a team. Anyway, I'm just gonna move on. This lady, she looks like Evelyn Lozado, like I told y'all, but she has a mixture of Paula Patton without the heavy voice. Cause Paula Patton got a heavy ass voice. Sometimes I be like, damn, are we still are you still asleep, Paula? Are are you still sleepy? Paula be like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I had a great time. Paula, Paula, you need a throw lossage? You need some high tea? <clears throat> Just do this. <clears throat> Just clear your throat. Now, I tore it down a little bit, but I will say this. I am happy to see her, you know, she started a minority brokerage firm. She's, she's about her money, but she's about that damn mess too. She is a boss that lets the shit happen she likes she likes the messiness. She allows it to happen in front of her and she doesn't stop it. Which lets me know, yeah, half the time you in the midst of the mess and you okay with it. Because a lot of the conversations and arguments that happened on this show, she was sitting right there co-signing the shit and she could have stopped it and said, oh, no, 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 no. This is my firm. I'm setting the tone. We not doing this shit up in here. If you want to caddy cuss each other out, don't do it around me because I've hired every last woman in here. I hired, and don't this is this is not a rep good representation on Netflix or the world for a lower royalty. Point blank, period. This is becoming a mess. But she didn't. She be right in the middle of the shit. But um, move on to her sidekick, Joanna Man. AKA HR. They call her HR because she stays in everyone's business. Here's the kicker about the shit. Joanna is a damn liar. Joanna, old ass, has a 21 year old who just had a baby, so she grandma. Proud of it. Joanna, and the reason why I said Joanna is a liar is because Joanna is actually going through a divorce and in she actually ends up divorcing the man on what episode seven six or seven she actually finalizes her divorce but yes she coming around these bitches every day at work wearing her wedding ring like like she she in the home with this man they ain't even together ain't been together and if y'all know like i know y'all know damn well a divorce takes a long time to happen you don't get a no damn divorce in a week this ain't prison it takes a while to happen. So, Joanna, I don't like her. She 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 runs behind Sherelle to the point where I don't know where Sherelle start and, and, and her ass in. Because Joanna be right there with that bad ass weave she got in her hair with them. Oh, let me get off. Let me get off. And, and let me say this. Joanna, I, thought you, I know you thought you was killing it. I know you thought you was killing it in that floral brocade dress. But that was a hot ass mess, okay? I need you to get that back to a toddler for their birthday. I need you to stop doing that shit. Like, that was ugly. And you got the nerve to be in people's business and you lying about being married. I, mm mm. No, no, no. Rena. Rena? Rena is my girl. Rena is smart and about her business. And Rena is. You know what? I will say this. I'm going to say this about Rena. Although she is smart, she kind of backpedaled a little and pussy popped a little bit um, in talking to Sherelle about her being a broker now. Um, mm, yeah. 
she yeah she, i'm gonna get on i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna tell you more about rena and why i said she she she's strong and i love her she's one of my favorites on the show um but at the same time when it yeah i'll tell y'all about that later yeah um, move on. Who else we got? We got um Colony. Colony. Um, here, here's here's the thing with Colony. Colony, beautiful, smart. However, she's too damn loyal for her own good. Her loyalty don't make no damn sense because in the end, she gets shitted on, and then when she gets shitted on, she's so hurt. And she can't believe somebody shitted on her because she felt like she bringing in the money. And I said, this is how Sherelle is showing you, Colony. She don't, res she, she respects you as long as you bring in her money. You, everything else, she don't want to deal with or hear about. And, the, and, and why I say this is because um, towards the end of the season, Colony comes forth to Sherelle because... Uh, if if you you're gonna realize, Colony and Joanna are always throwing shade at each other, and that's because they're fighting for Sherelle's love. They are fighting for Sherelle's opinions, love, and uh, they just thirsty. You know, they like I don't know what's wrong. They they just I I have never seen two women just running behind this damn woman. To the point where it's like you can't. I, I, the only difference with Colony is that Colony really does have her mind of her own, and she really can do real estate. And she's not just sitting in the office or taking notes like Joanna. Joanna was, from what the show says, Joanna was a um, an agent, but now all she do is run messages, take phone calls, and put people on Sherelle's calendar. But Colony, yeah, Colony can be a little messy and loyal to the wrong, just, just, yeah, just loyal to the wrong people. That's how I feel. Um, Tennille, bitch, you a bully. You a messy ass bully. Oh, Tennille, oh, I, yeah, Tennille, mm, she rough around the edges, look like she a, like she will put on some Timberland boots and stump the shit out of somebody okay Tennille is just rough around the edges and she always running back with shit it's almost like she the between Joanna and Tennille they like carrying mess and run it back and then if you say something to Tennille Tennille ready to pop off and, and go and, and damn near beat your ass because you better not say nothing back to her. Yeah, she can talk all the shit she wants. Just don't confront her about the shit she's saying. That's Tennille. Tennille is a bully. And she carried a mess. Um, and Sophia. Or Sophie. I'm sorry, her name is Anne Sophie. Um, I believe she's Haitian or Creole. I know she said she came from Haiti. That I do know. But she's the she see, I think she's the youngest very very by her money makes that money um i like that she's not gullible i like the fact that when it comes to her business she don't give a shit about sherelle she don't give a shit about nobody she go on where where it makes sense and the reason why i say that is because we you will find out rena has her broker's license and she kind of brings a proposition to I believe in episode two she b brings a proposition um and a question to and and to Colony and although Colony was so loyal to Sherelle she was like how dare oh my god we there can how dare there be a another um brokerage in in Tampa Bitch, you that loyal? You can't see the forest from the tree. It can be four or five of them. Why won't you go get your broker's license? Why would you want to work up under somebody and have a boss when you could be the damn boss? Colony, see, that's the shit I'm talking about. Colony, the loyalty is 
dumb as hell sometimes. But anywho, Rena was like, I got my license. She ain't the only bitch that can make some shit happen. And if I got to, I'm looking into get my own place, my own space. I'm ready to do this thing. What do y'all think? And said, I think that's great. And hey, I don't feel appreciated here. And I said, well, damn, Sherelle, what you been doing or not doing for these ladies to already feel appreciated? And your firm, your brokerage has only been open, family, for what, two years? Maybe, no, has it been two years or four? I think it's, I think she opened in 2018. So it's probably been like four years. But what you been doing for these ladies to feel like they're unappreciated? They're, they're not appreciated. It's beyond me, you guys. Um, anywho, um, who else we have? Ooh, we have, uh, oh, Carla. She is um, Hispanic fish. She moved to Tampa. She was in a 10-year relationship. And she moved, and then she moved, well, she moved here. And the relationship didn't work out. And they have kids together. I said, you ain't married? What the hell you doing with a dude for 10 years and he ain't put no ring on and then you get you move to a different state and the shit don't work out. Okay. All right, Carla. All right. Not this Carla. That Carla. Because this Carla, uh-uh. I ain't mean nobody. You got five-year plan with me, boo. I ain't, no, ain't going to be with nobody that long. Nobody. And I have a commitment ring, something. Yeah, we not doing this. Mm-mm. It's power in the POA and the D's. That's all I got to say. It's power in the POA and the D's. Trust my work in healthcare. It is power in the POA. Power of attorney and, and some D's to a house. There's power there, y'all. But let's move on, y'all. Dumbass Alexis. Ooh, Alexis. Alexis. She's, she's so pretty. She's so pretty. She's pretty dumb. She, she uses her beauty, but doesn't do the work. And she has an excuse for everything. And I mean everything. Her husband is a professional football player who is looking towards retirement. He might be retired now. This girl act like she can't walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. And then when you ask her, girl, why can't you walk and chew bubble gum? This is, I mean, this is what you want to do, right? This is, you want to be in real estate. You got to multitask. I got so much going on. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. I, I, I have parents I'm taking care of. I'm like, bitch, welcome to the, welcome to the team. Welcome to life. Welcome. Welcome. Let me, I can name y'all the shit I do. Baby, some of y'all, somebody even asked me one time, damn, where you sleep? I said at night, when I, you, it's about juggling. It's about prioritizing. Yep, I'm a mother. Yep, I'm a wife. Yep, I work full time. Yep, I'm in school full time. Yes, I run a business. Mm -hmm. And I do this. I'm on these YouTube streets. That's about six things, right? And I have residual income in different areas. So, yes, I do the damn thing. Alexis, you need to get like me. Alexis, you need to get on my level. Alexis, this is what women do. We multitask. And I don't know why you struggling with this shit. And if you need a nap, say you need a nap. But stop making the damn excuses for why you can't have something in this life. You can do it. But, y'all, this girl, she showed up to show a house to the client. I believe episode three three or four she showed a client a house on behalf of Tanil. Tanil is trying to help her gain some footing in the real estate business but Tanil said and she was right you can't tell her nothing she thinks she know everything and she goes to show this house Tanil's client name is ben and she has no facts about the house Bitch just walking through the house, opening heavy ass doors and turning on water and shit and don't know shit about the property. The man says, how many bathrooms? She, how many bedrooms? How many bathrooms? He, She said, uh, three, four. No, four bedrooms, four baths. No, 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 I'm wrong. Five bedrooms. She don't even know the specs of the house. I said, not me. I would never. 
And I mean, never. But her idea, her thing was the house will sell itself. No, bitch. Don't ever tell me a house going to sell itself with me. No, I want specs. That man asked her how much was the taxes on the house approximately. She did not know. That man said, oh, what about boat? House, what, what's the sizing um, that I can have for a boat? What, what's, the, what's the size? Oh, I, I'm sure I can get that for you. You don't even know that your client is into his boats and yachts. And you don't know what the, your client does. So you can't answer those quick. I was like, okay. And she knew she messed up. She knew she messed up. And I was like, how you showing the house and don't know shit about the house? But you opening doors and windows and shit. Like you pay some bills and got air on. Child. And her husband, he like, yeah, you should go out there and make that money. Dude, you can do it. You can do it. He don't know. He don't know half the shit that she ain't doing. That girl is at work sitting there twirling her thumbs. Can't make a buyer cannot get a buyer to come to not one damn showing but according to her when sherelle fired her oh yeah because she got fired sorry spoiler alert she got fired according to her when sherelle said i gotta let that ass go because you're not producing she was like you just dropped me you didn't see the potential in me i'm sorry i didn't like how sherelle did it I may have changed some wording in the conversation, but bitch, you was not producing. You should have been gone. And the, the fact that you was with her on her team for a year and didn't make any sales. This ain't an internship, boo. So I'm just gonna hit a few points um, and then I'll let you guys go and watch this great, like selling Tampa, like I said, was really good. Episode one, issue I'm having with Sherelle in episode one. They go to show a house. Well, they're, they're having a, well, it's kind of like a party. Um, It's a prospect party for this home. So they they want um all the, the realtors there, all the ladies to bring their, their buyers um, because they this house is on the market and they need it to sell. Sherelle, of all marketing photos, you gonna pick a photo that Rena is not in. So the issue Rena was having, and I said I got the same fucking issue. I got the same issue with 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 it, Rena. Me too. Okay, me too. Excuse me. Me too. The issue I'm having is how dare you invite me, and then you don't have a picture with me in it and then tell potential buyers I'm not in the photo because I didn't stay to take the picture and then secondly then it was well she left and Rena told the truth she said well you guys were late she said I had a seven o'clock play my daughter was in her first play you guys were over an hour, hour and a half late. She said, I was on time for the marketing shoot. And then you guys were running behind. I could not stay any longer because my priority after from nine to five is my hours. My priority after five was to my daughter. And I said, okay, okay. But she said, but, 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 but I even stayed a little later and it's still didn't happen. So Sherelle said, well, well, you also had black pants on. I said, now, which one was it? You ain't, you're, uh, see, the issue that I had with Sherelle on the first episode was that you don't acknowledge Rena's issues. You don't acknowledge Rena, Rena's feelings. And then when she snap and pop off and do her own thing, you hurt. You're pissed. What you pissed for? I was like, wait a minute. Which one is it? Acknowledge that you guys were late first. Do that, fam. Like, acknowledge that, yeah, okay, well, here's the thing. The reason why she isn't in the picture is because we were running late. And secondly, what we could have done was y'all could have, you know, touched her up in. Y'all could have, y'all could have said, well, you know what? You take your photo shoot and we'll retouch the, 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 the marketing picture and add you in. 
Bitch, you spiteful. Sherelle is spiteful as shit. And I, I don't know why she got it for Rena. I don't know. I don't know. But that was spiteful as hell. And Rena was like, well, it's black in the photo. Why couldn't I wear black? But she was like, well, you wouldn't have been matching. Okay. That's fine. Maybe she missed the dress code. Maybe she missed the memo on the neutral tones. Okay. Okay. But bitch, you still could have, to make her, make it inclusive, you could have put her in that photo. Period. No excuses. But you got Juana over here talking about some, what, you didn't show up? You didn't show up? And she was like, wait a minute, Juana, even you were late. And she shut up. I was like, Juana, shut up. Shut up with that Christmas brocade dress you wearing. And she was the main one, episode one, talking about it's a cocktail party and we need to make sure we remain and look professional. Okay, but your titties sitting out popping and you got thighs for days and you got gaps in your dress because it's so snug. So you can't really sit down because you're going to be showing all your goodies. Juana, gone somewhere. Gone somewhere. Episode two. My issue. Um, My issue, episode two, was about that commission split. I'm with Rena again. How you gonna go from, here was the commission split. They went from 95 to five. Basically, 95 went, you know, to the realtor, 5% to the company. All because Sherelle stinking ass wanna go from Microsoft Windows XP to Windows 11. She going from 95.5 to 80.20. Rena was like, in 30 days, Rena was like, what the hell? She was like, wait, what the hell? And she's like, I'm sorry. We couldn't have gotten this, like, we couldn't have had a discussion on this changing or gotten a heads up. She's like, this is a heads up. Rena was like, you don't spring that on someone within 30 days. This is their livelihood. This is how they eat. She's like, well, then I guess you need to sell more. Sell more? Bitch, I'm bringing in a hundred thousand up in like I was like, okay. Rena was so professional, but Sherelle turned real bitch. She turned real bitch. She, Rena said to her, "I'm not understanding why such increase." I said, "That's what I'm saying. Five percent to twenty percent. I need you to make that make sense." Y'all, Sherelle said to her, "Marketing." She said, we're increasing marketing and software updates. And uh, what did she also say? And lending. You increasing marketing and my ass ain't even in the picture. How you marketing a company that I'm not even in the picture of, but you want me to give you? My twenty uh, percent of my earnings, and bitch, you got me messed up. You got me and my abilities and my common sense messed up. I said, Sherelle, you know that don't even make sense. And then Sherelle was so stuck because it didn't make sense. And Rena was asking them questions. She was hitting her, hitting her. She was like, Can you tell me what? Can you tell? Me? She told her, If you have any further questions, you can get on my calendar. Joanna can set that up. No, bitch. Joanna can't set that up because I'm talking to you right now. How about that? What's good? What's good, Sherelle? Rena was talking to you right there. You brought up the commission rate split in front of everybody. So let's talk about it in front of everybody. No, I want to get on your goddamn calendar, punk. I want to talk about it right now. She had pissed me off because you know what? Working in corporate before, working in the medical Field, they do that type of shit. They they do. Sometimes inappropriate conversations are had about performance, about patient care, or you know, financial things like that sometimes happen in front of other co-workers, which gives them an opinion about you or your abilities. Okay, and I'm sorry, 
as a black woman, we can't afford that. We can't afford to be talked about or side-eyed or judged about what we can and cannot do. When we come to work, we have to put our best foot forward, know what the hell we're talking about, and keep it professional. Not, 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 not only that, but keep our hair looking a decent way before somebody be asked. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent. Um, Tennille. Tennille. You really, let's just be honest. Tennille really did not want to help Alexis in her selling in real estate. She really did. She was looking for something to be messy about. And um, she got it. She got it. She saw that Alexis was weak. And in the end, when her client wasn't happy and said, don't bring Alexis back here. I don't know what the hell y'all think y'all doing over there it confirmed it and yeah yeah um Tennille was messy though like the conversations she she was yeah she Tennille Tennille was messy she really didn't want to do anything um who else Carla isn't producing as well and the reason why she didn't produce is because she's still heartbroken over her 10-year relationship ending I said, girl, you keep acting up. You ain't going to have no food for your household. So you need to get it together. And Sherelle basically had to put her, pull her to the side and say, look, we all have, we all been through some shit. We all got issues, but you going to have to find your way back because I can't have no weak links. So Sherelle um, has put it out there that you need to hustle and hustle hard. Okay. And her two weak links are Alexis and Carla. And those two people are always on the edge. They feel like, you know, any type of showing, they never bring any person. The only difference is that Carla is, you know, she knows how to talk. She knows how to show a home. Alexis, she just, she relies on her beauty. And I guess she still thinks the walls in the house gonna sell itself. Um, what else do I have to say about this season? Um, of course, Sherelle gets pregnant by Ocho Cinco after being with him for nine months. Um, is there anything else that I'm missing? I don't want to see the thing is, you guys, I don't want to give it too, you know, give it away too much, but I want to give you enough where you're like, oh, you know what? Let me go watch because I ultimately want you guys to watch. So y'all can like, you know, jump down in the comment section and tell me what you thought or, uh, you know, of the ep episodes and the, the people in the show, all that good stuff. Um, oh, I will say this. And... Anne doesn't um Anne is doesn't know herself yet. I can tell. Anne is always on the verge of tears. Always. And because she's the only child, Anne always has to go within and find her her strength from within. And I think sometimes Anne is exhausted. She's young, but I also feel like she doesn't know. Um not that she doesn't know her self-worth. But it's she's always on the verge of crying, and her tears are usually stemming from, I guess, her working so hard. Like her, like I get, I, I don't know if it's she's had to sacrifice her love life in order to gain things in the real estate market. Um, I don't know, and just. It's almost like she's always she's always trying to prove something to herself. And I think that's why her and Colony get along so well. And I think it's because Colony is always trying to prove to Sherelle that she can run a business in her absence. And Sherelle ain't thinking about Colony ass. Sherelle want Joanna Man, aka HR, to run run it. And it's just, yeah. It's just always gonna be a clash there with them too. Um, Rena and Sherelle, I can see that love hate. I can see the love hate because I can see that Sherelle doesn't want any of these bitches to go any higher 
or bigger than her. Point blank period, I said it, okay? That's where their issue is because Brina is very professional. She can, like, Sherelle felt slighted. And that's why I said I was going to talk about um, the backpedaling because when when the conversation was brought, brought to Sherelle, Sherelle came to Rena and asked her about the conversation. Rena did not, she did not say she propositioned the girls, but she did. Ultimately, she did. She brought them an opportunity and said, hey, what if I'm doing this? Would you guys come? Like she was, you know, she was, she kind of propositioned them in a way. And Colony, being the loyal person that she is to Sherelle, said she basically asked us to join her 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 brokerage. So of course Sherelle feels like she don't trust Rena because she gonna steal her two best people, but the two best people don't really feel valued by you because they can't talk to you because your ass ain't never there. And when they do talk to you, it's they can have a conversation with you and you like, you know what? You want to talk further? Get on my calendar. Bitch, we right here. I'm right here. Talk to me. Talk to me. Don't talk to me at this meeting. Talk to me right now. What the hell else are you doing? What, what else are you doing? And yeah, I can see that. And season two, that's why I said I really want to see them have a season two because whew, I believe Raina's going to move on. Uh, I, yeah, I think she's going to move on. Um, lastly, um, the lady who, at, who runs Mayo Organics, she asked Sherelle to show her homes and, um, she was on the episode, she wants a multi-million dollar home and they show her and her family and basically they had a weekend to, well, two days to get her a house and they ultimately found a development or whatever. But, um, yeah. So, that was kind of cool to see Sherelle under fire and try to make it happen. Yeah, they cut up a little bit in Miami because they had to go to Miami. Yeah, Sherelle told Ocho they having a baby. And, yeah. I think that's it. Is there anything else? If there's anything I missed, please put it in the comment section for real, y'all. But this is Selling Tampa. I enjoyed all the episodes. It was really good. Hopefully, I didn't give too much away, but I gave you guys enough context where you guys were like, you know what? Let me check this out if you have Netflix. If you don't have Netflix, honey. And now I can't share my code. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get your gift card for Christmas if you don't have it. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, my name is Carla. Thank you guys for watching the Pretty Girl J channel. Don't forget. Now, don't forget now. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Go watch Selling Tampa. It's, it's better, if you ask me, than Selling Sunset. It, it is really good, okay? I love you guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys later. Cause you guys know we gotta we gotta talk about 90 day before the 90 days and um some other shows that are coming. You guys already know Married at First Sight is returning in what like two weeks. So we're back for that for sure. I am I'm with y'all. We're gonna cut up another season, y'all. But I'll see you guys soon. Until next time. Be good, be blessed. Happy holidays to you and your family. Merry Christmas. I love you guys. And see you later, pretty girls. Bye, boo. <laughs>